So I purchased something online uh, about a week ago and it took about five days from the time Canada Post said it was delivered to me actually having this. So I'll tell you a little story. We're gonna call it Captain Sergey versus versus uh, Canada Post. So um, I saw, you know, I was watching some YouTube videos and for some reason they had an advertising for some fancy whiskey glasses. And I don't drink that much nowadays but the glasses were so unique that I liked the idea right away because actually you can put like, I don't know, 50 ml of whiskey and it will look like the glass is full. Like I'll show you in a second, like a very unusual design. And so I got these, I ordered these two glasses. They were 70 bucks US each. So I bought two in case I have some friend I don't know about coming over. Well, check this out. This is back. Interesting packing material. Wow, what is this? <laughs> That's what I call well packed. Man. All right. We got one. Hold on. So seventy bucks for a whiskey glass. Oh, there's two of them. Wait a second. So did I buy? F there's another box the same as this one. So did I buy four? Yeah. I only I only meant to buy two glasses, but they never told me that one package has. Uh, but you know, really cool. One package has has two. And you see what's unique about this? There's kind of like another glass inside, you know. Let's see. So check this out. You see how the water, the water sits in the middle? And so they say that this creates um, basically uh, the best taste you can get because of the shape because how it's shaped, that's the best taste. Mm, amazing, even tap water tastes better. I'm kidding. So yeah, I think I got two. I got a set of four, which is actually pretty good. So it was 70 bucks for one box, and I think shipping was pretty expensive. Shipping was like $30 US, and it's coming out of the States. And for some reason it came to Quebec or Quebec in the east of Canada. And then from there, oh yeah, I think they used the USPS in the States, which is, um, you know, United States Postal Service, like a very cheap way. But it was packaged pretty good. But once it crosses the border into Canada, USPS uses Canada Post as a partner because Canada Post is pretty much the same cheap way to ship, just like USPS is in the States, right? And Canada Post can be really difficult to deal with. And so um, the manufacturer called the Norland, Norland, the factory, they sent me a tracking number and I kept tracking this. And then all of a sudden, 
And I changed my mailbox you know, when I when I thought it, it was time for this to arrive, like after a week, a week later since I bought this online. I keep checking my mailbox, nothing. But of course I knew that this is a bigger package, it's not going to fit, so I wasn't sure what to expect because I, ne I never uh, received any large packages through Canada Post yet at this location, since I only moved in like what, November, October? And so then all of a sudden, the, the factory sends me an update saying, uh, Dear Mr. Drachev, uh, uh, the, your package has been delivered. And I click on the tracking num on the tracking button and it takes me to Canada Post website. And sure enough, it says delivered December 11th at 10.59 a.m. So I run to my mailbox. There's no notices inside. There's no keys because turns out you know, our mailboxes are just regular, right? You can put a letter, you know, envelope in there, but you cannot put anything like this. And so in the same hall, in the same lobby, we have a set of large boxes. And on the top, it says Canada Post. And what's what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to leave you a key in your mailbox and with a number. And then just you go look at those large parcel boxes and you see what it says. Let's say in my case, just now I finally got the key, but in my case it said 1A or A1 and you just look for, you know, the particular box with the same number and then you open it, you get your package, you lock it and then there's a special slot where you push the key back in. Because even on the key it says do not take home. I'm not sure what happens if I do take it home, which actually I did. But anyway, so first time, right, they said delivered, but no notice in my mailbox, uh, no, no key, nothing. So. I waited a day, then I called Canada Post and I said, what's going on? Here's my tracking number and yes, your website shows that the package is delivered. I have not received it. So they say, okay, we're going to start a service ticket and you should get a response within three days. I said, okay. And so yesterday was day number three, business day. Yesterday, uh, Wednesday was business day number three. So nothing happened, my mailbox is still empty, no notices, no keys. And so um, finally, I called the guy and he says, yeah, they should have responded by now. I called the customer service, he says, I'm going to remind them. And then, um, no, I think that was Tuesday. Yeah, today is Thursday. So this was Tuesday, I called them and the guy says, uh, I'm going to get somebody on it because it's it's been three days. And so Wednesday, I finally find a key. Yeah, around like 10 or 11 o'clock when Canada Post truck arrives here. I finally get the key and it says 1A. So I go to that large, um, you know, like a, like a cupboard with a, lots of parcel boxes. And at the top it says 1. At the very top it says 1, Canada Post. And then... It, it has boxes uh, with letters, A, B, C, D, E. So I try to open A, right, because the one at the top says 1, and then there's A, so 1A, nothing, does not work. I tried all the boxes, I cannot believe it, the key does not work, like, and I'm like, stupid Canada Post, you know, but like, <laughs> how long, how much does it take, you know, to get a regular package, you know? And so I call, I call uh, Canada Post again. I said, well, there's an update I'd like to provide. So I, st I got the key, but I cannot open the, the box. And so then this morning I got an email saying that the, your service ticket was resolved. No more action is necessary. So I go back outside. I try again the key with that 1A box, nothing. And then finally, uh, I, I thought the guy was coming around between 12 and 1. And so I thought, okay, so I'm going to open my shades here because there's only one entrance into our complex here. There's, they always pass by my windows, right? And I'm sitting here facing this, the, the alley where they come down to. And I thought, okay, I'm going to watch for the truck. As soon as I see Canada Post with the bright red logos, I'm going to run to the lobby and confront the guy, maybe beat him up or something, I don't know. Maybe get a big screwdriver, or maybe my knife, and try to open that box when nobody's looking. But of course, that's just crazy, crazy thinking, right? And so uh, 
I decided to go outside 12 o'clock and there's a guy there we have a guy in a wheelchair he was always, always comes out for a smoke I see him all the time I don't know his name but I know he's always there so now I see him he's trying to open the, the front door to get outside I said oh, excuse me sir I see you here all the time do you know what time the Canada Post truck uh, comes over come over and he says uh, yeah usually around 10 11 and now it's already 12 15 I said really I thought it was like after 12 he says, no, usually they come between 10 and, and 11. Shoot. So I thought I missed the guy, right? So I said, okay, but never mind. I told him a little story how, you know, stupid this situation beca became. Like, finally I have the package somewhere, but I cannot open the box, right? And we both laughed at the, at the Canada Post. And then I sat down there, there's a little, like a chair or something. I'm going to sit here and wait for Canada Post truck. I'm not leaving. And then one of our uh, property managers, like a very uh, pretty girl, she uh, she works, takes care of these buildings. Actually, she was the one who was she was she was changing the light uh, when we came uh, for like a final inspection of the apartment. We opened the door and there's a beautiful girl doing something over there above the fridge. It turns out she's one of the property managers. I forgot her name, Kathy or something. Risa, don't remember, but I know she has an office here in the, like we have four buildings, all with the same street uh, number, but then there's building A, two, three, four, I mean building one, two, three, four, and she's in the middle, there's a little building where they have an office, and actually I went there yesterday, I said, uh, maybe they left a package over here, you know, because uh, on the on the website it says left, delivered to a community mailbox comma or parcel box or security office that's why i went there and she says no nothing i just maybe wait for the did you did you check other buildings and i said yeah but i cannot enter other buildings but i could look through the glass see if they left any boxes on the floor right nothing and so i'm sitting on that chair just watching some videos on youtube on my cell phone and this girl comes in and uh, she says, hey, did you, did you find your package yet? I said, no. I said, look, I'm trying to open it. Nothing works. And she says, did you try these boxes? And I'm like, wait, what boxes? And I never noticed that, but right under the, you know, we have like four rows of small boxes, like where my mailbox is. But right at the very bottom, there's a couple of large boxes i did not know who they are for but i look closely and on the first box it says a1 and then there's another one i think b1 and c1 was that big commode of boxes there was one at the top right and then it said a b c d e and my key said a1 and so i assumed it was that one and so the girl says, did you try this one? I'm like, holy moly. It says one A1, right? The same as what's on my tag, right? It's And it's right under my my mailbox at, at the very bottom there, right on the, same, on the same side of the lobby. So I try to open it. It doesn't want to go in because I scratched it, you know, so much with the other box. But eventually it goes in. I open it. I see the package. So it turns out Canada Post was not as stupid as we thought, you know? So somebody else was. But anyway, it's my first time. I never received a big package before, but turns out that's what they do. So now I know the procedure. So you have to wait for them to leave you the key. And then you have to be very careful at deciphering the, the box number because it can be 1A or it can be A1. You know, very confusing. And uh, so yeah, and that's my story and I stick to it. So now I have a set of four cool whiskey glasses uh, so 35 bucks each right turns out so I thought it was 70 for one so it's 35 bucks US for each glass so in my first load is delivering tomorrow I I touch base with a guy my carrier is somewhere in Texas and I said you still delivering tomorrow he said yeah so I left a comment or update on the on the TMS and I sent an email to the customer to the owner of the of this power only load the trailer 
I said, yeah, the driver, the carrier will be delivering between 3 and 4 p.m. local time in Houston. Uh, thank you. And now I'm dealing with two more loads, potentially. I might have two more loads. One is, uh, one is a grinder and the other one is a uh, large forklift. But it's been going on and off like for the past two weeks. You know, now I found a carrier for one of these. But the customer is not ready to ship. They're finalizing some financing documents for the buyer in Canada. And so now I asked the carrier and he says, well, actually it was only this time. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do anything this month. And so very tricky. So first it's hard to find a carrier with the proper equipment. Then once you find the carrier, the customer is not ready. So now I'm losing the carrier and now I have to start looking for a carry again but anyway that's my update so the Hellcat is safely uh, in storage and what's interesting with these uh, Hellcats is that the manual the manual it comes with a car only covers 3.6 and 5.7 liter engines you know nothing is said anywhere about 6.4 v8 like scat pack uh, or 6.2 supercharged like Hellcat, you know, and I emailed the sales guy about this. I said, do you know where I can get the, the proper manuals? Because, you know, I want to just check out all the functions and, and uh, you know, and like see what the uh, fuel recommendations are, you know, what the service oil change intervals are, you know, because uh, Hellcat is different, right, from regular V8. It's supercharged, so it should, it should I'm guessing oil should be changed uh, more frequently and maybe there's a different brand of oil that's recommended. And so the sales guy uh, came through, he sent me like three or four different uh, booklets. One of them was for 21 Hellcat and then eventually he found 22, like a, just a PDF, you know, like a like booklet that I downloaded to my computer. So it has some useful info about all those drive modes, you know, like track, sport, street, uh, very useful and uh, you know oil recommendations like for this car they recommend you must change oil every six months or every 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers whatever comes first so even if I have let's say thousand kilometers on it but I pick it up in April and then uh, May June July so in July I'm supposed to do uh, oil change even if I have you know 900 kilometers on it because otherwise, you know, I can lose the warranty, right? So you got to do what they tell you to do because it's an expensive car. So I'm going to stick to all the rules that I have to follow. So that's it. That's a quick update. Cheers.